Hello everyone, and welcome to Fire Them Plays Dead State Reanimated. Now, Dead State is an indie, an indie game that probably flew under most people's radar. But I, it is one of the few games I've actually <clears throat> found on the internet. And this is a game that was so good, and it blew my mind just how great it was that I just had to get the real one off of Steam, which is the version you're getting now. I do not think I played the reanimated upgrade update, whatever, so uh, things may change a bit from my previous experience. Also, I will not play with um, walkthroughs that would allow us to get every survivor there is because I want my experience to be uh, my experience with you to be most like the one I had when I played the first time. So first of all we're going to create a custom character. Uh, this is basically the portrait because uh, our character model is not going to look exactly the same. Um, I'm picking a woman because women are badass and awesome and because they are going to kick ass if there is ever a zombie apocalypse. Which is basically what we're going to play here. I think you're going to see a trend in the games that I play where um, <laughs> there's a lot of uh, apocalypses. But you know what? This uh, the, uh, Apocalypses tend to bring some great gameplay. Now I'm making our character uh, somewhat young, um, probably younger than I am, but you know, eh, it's all right. Uh, we want scars, do we want scars? This is, this is she's scary, <laughs> humor. I'm just gonna get the um, eyebrow scar, which I think looks pretty good. Um, doesn't need to be hurt, and smoky eyes, always nice. Glasses. Um, I don't think, nah, better to have none. Earrings. Oh, this is going to change everything. She has to have the gold stud, because this here is going to change everything. Yeah. Necklace. Oh, <laughs> all right. So what you see here is actually everything you will ever see. So this area here where the actual silver chain would be, uh, well, there's nothing. So yeah, let's give her a gold chain. Do we give her a choker? Why not? She's badass. And she has, where is that? Stud brow bar. I do not see it. I am sorry, I do not see it, so I'm not going to use it. Uh, tattoos. Flames were good. Oh, there's a start button. <laughs> That's great. I love it. Uh, hearts and wings, which is amazing because it's under the shirt, so we don't actually get to see it. So I'm going to pick it, of course. All right, this is good. We're going to accept this and move forward. Our body will be... Um... This one, it says, uh, I just survived the apocalypse and all I got was this lousy t-shirt. And this doesn't really look like her, but it will do. All right, let's start this. Our name will be Jesse Jane, because uh, it's in honor of Jesse from the RimWorld game. We will use a custom character. Three main characters are not locked into any skill or stat choices when spending skill points. Of course, that's what I want. Alright, so this is uh, the RPG mechanics, and it's actually very useful. We want a lot of stats here. We want perception because uh, this is going to give us more initiative and will allow us to hit at range. Vigor. This is not as useful as it seems because our character is never going to die. But we still need to put a lot of points in there because she will be basically everything. She will kill at the distance, she will kill up front, she will be awesome. 
in every possible way. Agility determines uh, the total action points. This is also extremely useful, because if she gets two attacks, usually at, uh, towards the end of the game, two attacks are enough to kill any zombie. So we're gonna get some uh, good points and everything, but I'm gonna put two more points in strength, because that will allow her to uh, fight a little bit better. I'm, I'm going to remove a point in Vigor and I'm going to give it to... Uh, well, I don't want to die in one shot, so I'm just going to remove one and I'm going to give it to... Um, agility. Alright, this should be good for now. Uh, now we have a lot of skills. Melee is basically how much damage you do with melee weapons and how many action points they take. This is a turn-based strategy game, but only when combat is involved. Uh, otherwise, it is a real-time strategy game. But more on that later. So basically, this will consume a lot less action points uh, for every attack with melee weapons, which is actually super useful because, as I said before, if you get to attack numerous times in the same turn, you do a crap ton of damage especially since you have good strength. As far as range go, um, this is basically the same thing, but for weapons, ranged weapons. Leadership, super useful, will allow us to um, work with our people a lot better. And from the reason to intimidating, this is effectiveness of allies in combat. It's not that useful, but it is useful. Negotiation, how will the character convinces others to share their point of view? Uh, reduces moral decay. Moral decay is actually not a problem as far as the last time I played, since I made a crap ton of moral every day. But uh, I'm going to come back on that later too. Medical, how well we can heal. And actually, I'm never going to use any points in there. We will find some doctors to do that for us. Science, how well the character can use elements to create new items. Crafting better armor, new ammo, new throne weapon, crafting. This is not that. Adds contact poison to weapons. Oh, I didn't know you could do that. That. Oh, alright, so you get some. Um, every three um, levels in a skill, you get a. An ability. So an ability you could get out of this is 50% uh, reduced chance to be inflicted with the poison status or you can squeeze fuel from every possible sources resulting in an extra gallon per day. Um, I'm, I'm going to come back on that later but once you choose it's permanent you cannot come back. Well I can come back now but if we press next it will be forever. Survival. This uh, d uh, decides on the speed we're going on the area map. I I'm going to come back to that later, but this is also useful. And this would give us a uh, better range on the war map. And this would increase the maximum harvesting amount by 25%. This is good, but we're never going to use it. And mechanical is good for lockpicking, upgrading the shelter, basically all the other stuff. But... Honestly, we don't need that many points in here, because mechanical, um, there is some good things. It's g it would take less time to upgrade the shelters, but I think it would need our character to be in there, and our character will not build the shelter at all. Uh, and this would cost less parts to make. It's not useful. We've seen this. Science. Uh, we've seen that later too. Sorry about this. Medical. Uh, players' medical skills restore an extra 5 HP when using medical item. Or, your knowledge of traditional remedies has proven quite useful, generating 2 bandages from per day from natural sources. This is actually quite good. Not gonna use it. Negotiation. Players' personality lifts the spirit of their fellows, earning an additional 5 morale per day. Your skill at getting people to work better in a crisis. The upgrade repair time. We are never gonna repair, so... Uh, and actually, I'm almost going to fill all of those eventually. 
and proves party chance to hit undead by 25% for 3 rounds. Oh, this is an active uh, effect. Or don't panic, which will keep allies from going into a panic or removes them from one. This is super useful. Many times people will go into a panic and this is an ability you need to use. So I'm probably going to keep those points here for now, but I'm going to see about that later. Ranged. When players gain a 5% additional critical chance on human targets which range weapons, or 10% critical hit on undead with ranged weapons. So I'm going to go with um, chance uh, of a critical on humans, because zombies are more likely going to be attacked by melee weapons. And this is where the good stuff comes. Backstab. There gains a 15% increased critical chance when hitting an enemy in the back with a melee weapon, or plus 5 to their armor class. Huh. Do I go assassin or tank? I'm gonna go assassin. And that's it. I think that's gonna be good for now. Uh, I'm gonna put one point in negotiation because I'm gonna need that eventually. Alright, so this is our character, a strong uh, melee character with some good range stats and less health than it probably should, but it's okay. Uh, these are our perks. Allow oh yeah, uh, the fact that we're the um, leader will always be the leader of every party, and if we do not go outside, nobody goes. So uh, it's a necessity. And since we have, uh, we are that we have this, which allows us to choose one of our party member to go next whenever, uh, even if they've already played. So it's very useful, but it's going to skip the rest of their turn. So uh, you have to think, like maybe if she goes first and then it's the enemy and then it's one of our allies, she will be able to bring the ally before the enemy and the ally will be able to attack first. This will finalize your character? Sure, let's do this. Let us beware of saying that death is the opposite of life. The living being is only a species of the dead and a very rare species. Hmm, that is quite nice. Thank you, Nietzsche. Nietzsche's? 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 Alright, so we're in a plane, basically, and we hear that some stuff is actually happening. And then we hear a commotion at the front. Oh shit, something ha bad is happening. We're losing control, people are trying to jump out of their seat, nothing seems to be happening well. Everybody is screaming, everybody's sad, and then there is darkness and fire. So basically, we crash. Uh, what we can understand is that the captain was infected, and there we are. Uh, let's take things simply at first. I'm going to read this uh, fast. Just want to make sure that uh, I understand everything. Uh, we can move the camera with WASD and Q and E to move around. And it's actually going to be super useful in the future. Moving can be done by clicking on the left mouse. All right, as you can see, this is uh, done. All right, this is uh, real time. Hello, is anybody alive? This is Sheriff whatever of Splendid PD. Yeah, the town is called Splendid. If you can hear me, follow my voice. You think the voice is coming from near the trail of the wreck? Which is quite good because the trail of fire is actually leading us towards the voice. <laughs> Talk about coincidences. And those other passengers don't look friendly. Or they shouldn't be alive. Well, this one's dead. So... Oh, I have to change something first. Options. I would like... Is, I think there's a button that makes every item show up. No, oh. Alright, I just entered uh, the fighting mode, but that is unnecessary. Ooh, there's a free camera too. That's great. Alright, so... I'm gonna find the button soon, but... Uh, we'll see. So we're going to grab a weapon, it's going to be our first weapon, it's going to be a an, an aluminum bat. Thank you. 
Thank you. Well, uh, yeah, weapons are useless if you don't equip them. All right, this is good. I remember how the game is played. So this is our inventory screen. We'll get two weapons. We'll get to change. We'll get two items that can be used at some point. And an armor and three accessories, which are also armors. But for different parts of the body. Now, we are walking slowly. And, oh, look at that. There's an evil guy here who is almost dead. So what we're going to do is... Can you still hear me? If you have to defend yourself, hit them before they grab you. All right. I'm, I've just entered the uh, actual fighting time, uh, fighting game. So I can see here that one basic attack is going to cost four action points. We can choose different kinds of attack. And they, depending on what they do, they're going to cost more or less uh, action points. And it's going to take me one, two... Three, four, five action points to get there. Oh, it, it tells us. That's awesome. And once we get here, we get one attack. And since we're fight, uh, attacking from the back, we get 100% two hit chance and 25% chance for a critical hit. Pock. There you go. And once the fighting is done, we go back to the uh, real time fighting, uh, real time moving around, I guess. The uh, Burning Man didn't have anything, and we are almost there at the Sheriff Reinhardt and Officer Castillo. So we're going to talk to this guy. You made it. You're safe now. We're going to get help. And hey, you okay? Stay with me. And you pass out. Well, you, we. I mean, come on. You know what I'm talking about. And we are waking up. Blah, blah, blah. Everybody's happy. Let's not panic yet. All right. Hello. Who are you people? Say nothing. Who the fuck are you people? I'm going to be nice and I'm going to say hello. All right. So we're in a school. And these people actually are afraid of us, but they're trying to help. Can somebody tell me what's happening? Do you remember the plane crash? Uh, and at this point, this is interesting because this is not really useful. We could say, where's my wife, where's my husband, where's my family, or whatever. And this is actually going to have absolutely no importance in the rest of the game, except for some dialogue. So if we say we are married, um, some people will not try to hit on us. And if we say we are not married, then, you know, then they're going to leave us alone. Um... Not really, I can't remember much of anything. I think I'm going to go with that. We don't remember anything, maybe the head trauma. Uh, memory loss, I see. I know who I am, I just don't remember the crash. So it's not, you know, too much of a problem. So we're in Texas, in a town called Splendid. But, by the way, I'm saying hi to anybody that lives in Splendid in Texas, if this town actually exists. We are in a local school. Takes us. Aw, oh, shit. Uh, this isn't where I belong. Can't stay here. I've lived in Texas my whole life. I've been never heard of Splendid. And I guess I'm home, kind of. Let's go with that. Welcome home, I guess. You should know you're pretty much stuck here. But we have food, facilities, generator, and it's secure. Secure? What does that mean? I don't think you understand. Outside, not safe anymore. Everything's changed. You weren't blah, blah, blah. Pandemic, blah, blah, blah. Martial law, blah, blah, blah. Zombies, blah, blah, blah. We all know how those things go. Uh, so they're going to talk by themselves. And before we go anywhere else, oh, we can't actually, we have to talk to some of them. Uh, I'll tell Davis, I'll let Davis tell you what ha what's happening. Okay, Davis is the guy in the wheelchair. Basically, he's the only person we won't be able to control during the game, but he will take care of all the management that we don't care about. <laughs> so he's actually super useful. And because he's in a wheelchair, he will never go outside. I mean, that's understandable. You don't want him fighting the zombies. I think you're out to talking about our situation. Sure. Good, I'll get the others. Uh, it's going to be difficult to believe. Uh, blah, 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 zombies. I don't know if anything can shock me anymore. I'm not an idiot. Or that I'm stuck in the basement. Blah, blah, blah. So I can be a dick, a dick, or a dick. I'm going to be... 
All right, uh, a dick, but a clueless one. Mom, we don't know that. Please just tell me. Zombies. Uh, you're crazy. Fuck you. And it's difficult to believe. Let's go with that. What do we need to make that happen? Getting things secure. Wait, are there dead people upstairs? That what you mean by secure? Let's go with, what do we need to make this happen? So what is happening now is they're going to ask our help to take care of the day-to-day -day, uh, grind, basically. So we'll have to decide on how we're going to... who we are going to bring us in town to get supplies and who we are going to leave in the, at the school to repair and build things. So, sure, we can do that. I don't remember what they asked us, but it's basically go up and take care of stuff. And we need either a medic, and that's Renee, or someone... Who who can fight, which is Anita. Uh, Renee and Anita, this is Renee. Uh, they're, uh, I mean, Anita is Renee's mother. And Anita can fight and Renee is a medic. So we're going to take Renee with us. And she's going to be super pissed if anything happens to Renee. So we're going to take care of that. Okay, it's decided you three go to the hardware store and get a toolbox and all the parts you can carry. So that's to build the fence around the school. So understood, let's go. All right, so this is the basement. Look at it quite uh, nicely because we probably will never go back, come back here. Um, this is all the stuff that was in the survival bag. We're gonna grab that quickly. I'm just going to take a look around quickly because I really don't want to come back here. It's pretty much useless. Sounds dangerous out there. I should check that bag for a weapon. Yeah, I've already done that. And this is, I don't know who, so it's not useful. I, I'm going to find a button that tells me where um, things are, the things that we can interact with, because right now this is a bit stupid. Set the generator turning off. Uh, we don't want it to turn it off. Basically, we could turn it off to preserve fuel, but then we wouldn't be able to use the freezer, and that's just bad because our, all our food is gonna be bad. Uh, there's a basement with a uh, basement shelf with some stuff, and all right. Say goodbye to the basement. We are not coming back ever again. And there you go. This is the actual school. Plenty of storage space in that room next to the basement. Yeah, this here is going to be our storage shelter. Shelter, storage, whatever. This here is where we'll keep everything. And everything that's food will actually get transferred and eaten at some point. We're going to keep... Uh, let's see, this, uh, I, I know I'm going fast, but it's going to be quite obvious after a while. This is a weapon. We've got the choice between the hammer or the kitchen knife. This one can counter attacks and dizzy opponents. And this one can counter and bleed opponents. And it can counter better. Uh, on the right, you can see the everything that's useful about this. So it costs 3 AP to attack does four noise. It doesn't attract that much. It could be much more. So the, you see, this is six. Um, it's a one-handed weapon. It has a range of one because it's a melee weapon and it does six to 15 damage. A bludgeoning is better against zombies and piercing is better against humans or slash, I guess. So this is six to 15 damage. This is three to 10. That's not even a contest. We're gonna pick this. Um, as you can see also, the damage modifier against the undead is 125% because bludgeoning does more damage to them. There's a 5% critical chance for two times the damage if it happens and it needs two strength and weighs 2.5 pounds. And this has uh, a break chance of 5% and this takes 5 AP to attack and does 18 to 25 which is definitely better, but it also means that we can't really move and attack in the same turn. Whereas this, we can either move and attack or attack twice, which is much better. We're going to keep... Uh, Alright, one of the other things we can do is bring a medic satchel and put some bandages in it. 
So like this, we only need to carry this uh, with us as our items. For the rest, this is a weapon we're not going to use. This is food. This is fuel. These are parts. These are... Um, all right. Uh, you can see in the description in the bottom. Ah, it's not showing. All right. Uh, this is a luxury item that promotes morale. So at the end of the day, every item like that that we are going to drop in the shelter here is going to be crowned up and then used as morale. And every day, it's going to lower our morale by a fixed amount and then get it up by the amount of items we've got that bring up the morale. Same goes for these candles, these pillows, and th this is food. And you can see the value at the bottom right. And this basically says that this is worth two foods. And this is worth 0.5 food per item. So there's two, so this is worth one. This is worth one. So basically this allows us to decide if the value to weight ratio is good or not. But right now we're going to put everything there. So this is basically all food. We're going to select everything and transfer it. There you go. And all right, and the stock button, what it does is it transfers every item we don't actually need, like food and luxury items. And boom, voila, we only have the weapons left. All right, this is the storage space. Uh, we have the kitchen here where we're never going to go. We're never going to go. This is the dining room, and well, it doesn't show here, but there will be the planner for the day where we'll decide who does what and when. This is the infirmary. Are uh, some characters like Anita? Uh, we could have the option to have them walking around, but it would be a huge pain to go and talk to each of them because they would be at random spots. Whereas I've made it so that they will stay where they are. So Anita will always be there. And we can talk to her at any point. Renee is in the infirmary. This is Joel. He's protecting the entrance. This is the radio room where we'll listen to radio once per day. And this is a workshop. We're never going to go. This is the science class. We're never going to go. This is the library. At some point, we will get um, secret codes that we'll get to decipher in here. But it's not for now. Everything here is useless. This is pretty much a flavor, yeah, anything. So we've got uh, restrooms, the gym. Outside, we've got a water well. We'll get to repair at some point. Some gas. This is for the car, uh, which is this one. But right now, it's broken. We'll have to repair it. Um, on this side is the exit where we'll have to go if you want to explore the rest of the map. And this area will be the stables where we will store horses if we find them. Right now, there are not many people here. Uh, I guess there's like five of us. But eventually, there will be a crap load of people. Uh, I think... Goals. Yeah, you can see here the amount of people we have and their mood. Elaine is on the second floor and she's um, she's the flight attendant and she blames herself for the crash. So she, so she is currently uncooperative because she's crying by herself. Renee, Joel, Anita and Davis were already here and already defending themselves. Renee and Anita are... Mother and daughter, mother, daughter. Joel is uh, the sheriff of the town, but he's not the sheriff. He's like the second one. He's the, uh, what's it called? Second in command. So he's not the boss. He's just a friendly guy that tries to do his best. And Davis is the man in the wheelchair who planned everything. Here is our goals. When, once we reach those goals, we will get points. These are our um, experience, uh, basically. We don't get experience from killing people. We get experience from 
collecting food, fuel, anti antibiotics, luxury items, and parts. Those numbers look huge, but don't worry, it's going to go pretty fast. And these are actually long-term quests that we'll eventually fi uh, manage to make, and these will get even these will give us even more points. The shelter. Uh, this is going to tell us who does what during the day, but since we cannot uh, use this to give people jobs, it's not as useful as the job calendar we're going to find later on. The inventory is only good for people in our party, and there's nobody in our party because we're at the shelter, but eventually it's going to be better than this. And character is only for us, and we're going to come back here to upgrade if we need it. Uh, AC is for the armor class, but we have zero for now. All right, uh, this covers the basics. Uh, basically, what we have to do now is we could talk to people, and it's actually going to be a necessity at some point. Looks like a nurse station, not really much use for serious injuries. So this is just a band-aids area. Afraid I used the last of our medical supplies on you. <laughs> All right, we'll we'll find some more. Uh, we will have to talk to people as time goes on because they have quests, side quests, and their morale is super important. So we have to be nice to them, and they will help us when the time arrives. But we'll come back to that later. How's your head? It's fine. I did the best I could. Thanks. I'm grateful. It was nothing. Well, it was. You were pretty beat up, but I'm glad I could help. You're too young to be a doctor. Are you studying medicine? Not quite. I'm training to be a doctor. Uh, she was almost done. Oh, she was a vet. <laughs> vet school? And she's not trained on humans, but she's actually quite good anyway. And I couldn't ask her how she did get there, blah, blah, blah. Uh, her specialties... Uh, people aren't really my specialty. I, I don't care. You're a medical student, it's okay. I'm sure you'll be a real asset. I'll do what I can. I have another question. What do you think of me? Um, right now, they're not going to say much, but eventually, as time goes on, they're going to say stuff like, I really like the, how you're dealing with the stuff. And some other people are going to be like, I hate you. I don't want to talk to you. And uh, can you tell me about the other survivors? Well, basically, we can... This is just flavor text at this point. At some point, we'll have a here's a present in the options, and we'll get to give them stuff. And if they like the stuff, it will uh, increase their morale. Right now, everybody's quite happy. Uh, we can see that in the goals. Except for Elaine. Uh, I'm okay, but my mood doesn't change much, I think. Uh, Rene is content, as is Anita, and Joel and Davis are happy. The happier they are, the better the game is. The lousier the morale is, the more terrible it is. And yeah, so we are going to leave this area and go do some things. And once we reach this point, yeah, we have the option to uh, go to the map screen. Actually, I'll uh, just wait a second. Because if I have to equip people their stuff, I need to do it here. I don't want to be stuck with uh, weaponless characters in my team. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> did I do it right or did I do it right? All right, so this is everybody's equipment. So Anita does not need to carry this. She has the baseball bat, which is one of the best weapons, uh, except for the steel bat. Uh, Joel has two guns, which is useless. So we're going to give him the nice stick and the shotgun and all the pellets. And we're going to bring the guns here and we're going to give the guns to me. Rene is our healer. This, these bandages are worth one... Uh, Mendic Satchel fill. Medical kits are worth 5 and Codeine is worth 3. So we're going to put 5 here, 3 more, so that's 18 and we'll bring this and the 2 are brought there. And we can't fill it anymore. 
So this is worth 20 healing uses. This is actually super useful. Elaine doesn't have anything, but she won't come with us. And Jessie, well, she's terrible at medics, medicine, but she needs to have some of it, just in case. And with this, everybody's armed. Ev Davis is not uh, Davis is not coming, so it's all right. Everything's uh, everyone's armed. Everyone's ready to fight. We are ready to go. Actually, we're gonna listen to the radio first before we're going out. Uh, blah blah blah. Problem. Pay attention. Blah blah blah. DJ is. Repeating the announcement. So eventually these are going to be useful, but I'm not going to read much of them. How can I help? I need to ration the shelter's food for a little while. I could do that and it would uh, give us m less uh, food eaten during the day, but it will um, lower everybody's mood. I could ask him anything that would improve your mood and he's going to say, I wish I could call my daughter, but more realistically, I could use real coffee beans and deodorants. They all have two items that will give them moral boost. So if I had on in my inventory some deodorants or coffee beans, then I would be able to give it to him. Can I ask you questions? Well, I, I'm just going to speed through all the dialogue. It's not all that useful. It's, it's useful if you want to know about the story, but you're not there for that. You're there to uh, listen to me play. And I don't need it because I've already played it. All right, so I'm going to reach this point. Oh, uh, by the way, you have to reload. It's super important. And I'm going to do it here because reloading actually costs a uh, action points. And well, I don't want to spend the those action points in the middle of a fight. I'm sure you understand. All right, uh, so I think that's good. Uh, we've got a good start going on here. I'm going to stop the video right here. And I'm going to say I hope you enjoyed this video game as much as I've enjoyed it. And if you want to buy it, it's on Steam right now. It's called Dead State Reanimated. It's very fun. I really recommend it. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the a small box below the video and if you have basically 10 seconds of your time and you don't know what to do with it i would really appreciate it if you use that time to click on the like button and subscribe to the channel it would mean a lot to me in any case i hope you have a wonderful day and i will see you next time